Well, good morning, beautiful people. Can't believe it's Wednesday already, just two days before the weekend. This December period is really uh, beginning to get to some people, so it's mm -hmm. nice. It's nice. It's interesting you should say get to some people. Like, I think because of all the excitement, my voice decided to take a walk. But it feels like it's going to be a great day and a great time to be watching TV. You're in for an amazing show. And there's so much happening today on Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, indeed. It's Wake Up Nigeria. And you know, that means we're going to be here with you for the next three hours. Uh, let's stop in the kitchen there. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, if you're going to be in the kitchen, you should be doing something. Yeah. Like, She's don't not... worry. Don't worry. Yoni. Yeah. Breakfast like... is coming. <laughs> I got you covered today. <laughs> Even if it's a sandwich or something like. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have water boiling hot tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Not to worry, I know Tokwe is going to be up to be so, up to something good in the kitchen there. But uh, hey, we have to say thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being there every single morning. My name is Titi Laya Oinso. And I'm Yomi Opo. We're streaming live right now at TVC Entertainment. Uh, dot TV and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in those comments on social media. And maybe send in a prayer or two for me as well. You know, hey, that I get over this sniffles. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Yeah, you can also download our app. Uh, of course, uh, from the Android and iOS stores. And this app means you can watch us from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, the show is starting off with a musical performance. We have Wari born singer and songwriter Winifred stepping into the building. And then from there, we go over to our home makeover segment. <clears throat> we'll be joined by uniquely skilled interior designer, Anita Ekata Onumwere. Now, it's going to be interesting to find out what she's going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Have you done a, a go over of your house recently? Mm. <laughs> also joining us for another musical performance is award-winning lyric baritone singer. I like that, lyric baritone, John Paul. Nice. And Makes you want to sing. <laughs> and on nutrition, we'll be having certified nutritionist, uh, a certified nutritionist who's going to be talking about healthy lifestyles, especially this season. You know, a lot of people start eating junk whenever Christmas is coming around. We're going to be talking all about how you can prevent that from happening. Mm, finally, we're going to be joined by relationship expert Sandra Dufaderi, and uh, she's going to be talking to us about keeping secrets in a marriage. Hmm. You know Sandra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very gonna, interesting yeah, lady. Yeah, very interesting. She's gonna come secrets. from secrets. Secrets. Yeah, secrets. They say <clears throat> there's always. They say there's nothing hidden under the sun. Yeah. You know, almost every secret comes out. But then they say there's some secrets that are just not worth telling. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that one. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, we're going to be talking to the experts uh, mm -hmm. shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, look, but typically, whatever happens in a marriage, you stay in the marriage. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's always my motto. Uh, yeah, so yeah, no but, third parties hearing gist. No uh, auntie or uncle giving you advice on certain issues. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear of somebody reported somebody and then it just makes everything worse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so uh, Christmas is around the corner. Uh, today is the 4th. Yeah. So that means just about three weeks or so. Yeah. Uh, left to go. How does it feel like I don't have enough money for Christmas shopping? But there's no only you. Because uh, I was looking at the cost oh, yeah. of chicken. And I was like, eh? Wait, is it one chicken or like a lot of chicken? See, yesterday I was telling you, yeah, we should, we should, should, we should totally try having pizza for Christmas. <laughs> try something new. Wow. Have it's a pizza, pizza Christmas. Pizza. No, no rice. You've been eating rice since January. <laughs> try Very pizza. True. When you eat pizza, you just forget that there's a need for chicken. Speaking of expenses, you have expenses more, even more expensive than Christmas. You have wedding or something coming up. Mm. This is Yomi, eh? Yomi, leave me alone. Uh, oh, leave so me alone. you have a wedding coming up this weekend. Or, oh, yes, or okay, okay. I thought weeks. you were talking about something else. Oh, oh but yes, oh, I do okay. have a wedding this weekend. Oh, your wedding is next year, and I don't want to wear people. Yomi has just been on me, and this is my wedding. You away. You, so, wait, are you like father of the day? Oh, yeah. I think Yomi is <laughs> about to be the father of the day. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> so, I have a wedding this I don't weekend, have this yeah. White mm -hmm. And now, there's this funny thing. So, the color of the day is um, green. 
Mm -hmm. Now, I have two green laces from two weddings already. Okay. And I have this third green. And I'm like, you know what? I've already paid for the ashore. That's like my contribution to your wedding. Right. Okay. I'm not sewing the dress because wow. I'm not going... I feel like my mom because my mom has like lemon green, teal green, dark green. <laughs> and I feel like I'm already my mom having different shades of green. Yeah. Nah. So, it was <laughs> interesting uh, that you should say that because... Uh, last year, 2018, I mm -hmm. refused to buy a shrubby. Oh, really? I refused. How I, did I you got, survive? I, it, people were throwing it at me left, right, and center. I was like, I'm sorry. This year, I'm not doing <laughs> it. Because I just looked at my wardrobe and these outfits, many of them, I don't end up wearing them again. Exactly. Um, and then you have this whole, and then, then the lace goes out of fashion. Yes. One comes back into vogue from like 10 years ago. True. And you're like, I don't understand. So, um, oh so I, that was just a decision. And I, I actually learned it from another, uh, an, a lady that I, I consider one of, uh, an icon in banking. Yeah. Let me yeah. just put it like that. Okay. And she said, no, I should. So she wears her own clothes. clothes. She makes her own. I think I'll own. try that. 2020, no, I And she yeah. just goes. Oh, no, no. I mean, know? I'm sure lots of people, events. even family members, have totally given up on me. Like, what I do is... <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? Put it over there. Like, I'm just not gonna. You're not gonna I probably I have like 100, 100. Is, uh, is it bills of what they call those things? I should be in the house, yeah. like wow. 100. Wow. Not, not no, kidding. No, no, no. Wow. And I've imagine. never, I've never made. I well, don't even know what to do. it's cheaper for you versus we the like ladies. A, maybe I should do like a nice. Or a coat of many colors or something. <laughs> exactly. Or, or like a mat. Put, put a, uh, that would be super stylish. Wow. In a play area. Wow. With but different colors, yellow, green, mm. yellow, orange. I don't know of someone who put together a lot of uh, Ashoke pieces for yeah. caps and turned it into a dress. And it was actually very, very nice. Maybe we should try that. Yeah. yeah. Like that. <laughs> we should try it. And do something. Anyway, so um, <laughs> expenses. You know, people need to um, keep Carbon. track of their expenses this period, this period. Because uh, not necessarily cut down, but make sure you keep track. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you, you still have a, almost a month to the end of December. Mm. Then you have the whole of January as and well. And you know January so. is like a year. <laughs> the year of January. I'm literally saving for January because I said 2020, I'll be prepared. Exactly, I'll be prepared for the exactly. year of January. That's what they all say, darling. That's what they all say. The end of December, you're looking at your account and you're like, wow, what happened? I thought I was prepared. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah but with, with, with careful planning, you can, you definitely can get some, put some funds away for everything that you want to do in, in January. We have to hand it over to Ibrahim, who is standing by for our news update. Good morning, guys. Uh, the day the style of dressing will interest me is a day it will be possible for me to use Ashoke as suit or Ankara as suit and present the news with it. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Now, the Department of State Services has uncovered a plot to cause a breakdown of law and order in various parts of Nigeria. It says the plan is to instigate protests, mass action and violence with a view to causing anarchy and destabilizing the country. And according to the DSS, the planners want, they want to cause chaos simultaneously in major cities at the federal capital in the coming weeks. It has now issued an alert and wants the alleged plotters to desist from their plan. Heads of academic and public institutions are now advised to warn their students and employees against engaging in acts that uh, will cause public disorder. The Federal Ministry of Work says the Akwangbon Bridge in Lagos will be opened this morning. The bridge was closed last month for rehabilitation works on some sections to address a major flooding problem on the 150-metre stretch. The Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, Ade Damolakuti, says the entire drainage path of about 1.5 kilometres from the bridge through communities to outer marina and into the lagoon, blocked by illegal refuse disposal, has been cleaned. The repaired road will now ease the movement of traffic along the axis. And after nearly 15 months in detention without charge, a former Navy officer and his wife can now uh, breathe the air outside an underground cell. Cap Captain Dada Labinjo was arraigned on Monday after he and 21 others were handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Here is a timeline of major events in his trial. The ordeal of the Labingers, who were both serving naval officers, reportedly started around 2001. They were charged and sentenced by a general court-martial for disobeying orders. And then they headed to the Federal High Court in Lagos for a review and reinstatement, which they won. The Navy then headed to the Court of Appeal in 2004. But after several adjournments, the court dismissed the appeal for lack of diligent prosecution. 
and in 2012, the Supreme Court unanimously upheld that decision. In 2014, Captain Labinjo emerged president of the Nigeria Ship Owners Association, but the body has suffered a prolonged crisis over the years. In September 2018, the Navy arrested the Labinjos and 20 of their staff, as well as their vessel. Their almost 15-month-old underground detention without being charged with any offense enraged rights activists. In August this year, the Federal High Court in Lagos ordered his release. And later that month, his wife, Lieutenant Commandant Labinjo, and four others were arraigned. Finally, the captain and the others were arraigned on Monday. The plea did not guilty to two counts of dealing in petroleum products without license within the Nigerian maritime domain and the Gulf of Guinea. Justice Muslim Hassan granted the accused bill in the sum of 10 million naira, with one surety who must own landed property in Lagos and show evidence of three years tax payment. Trial continues in February 2020. And the Chief of Army Staffs Conference is taking place in Kaduna, and what better time to give the force an order than now? President Muhammad Buhari declared the conference open with a demand that the Army and the entire armed forces work towards sustainably manufacturing hardware locally. He also commissioned the first fully made in Nigeria military vehicle, as our correspondent Tessie Makende reports on this. Announcing the arrival of a special guest of honor. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces arrive in the Trade Fair Complex venue of the week-long Chief of Army Staff Conference in Kaduna. In attendance as well is former Head of State, General Yakubu Gowon, service chiefs, serving and retired, among others. The gathering, according to the Chief of Army Staff, is to evaluate and appraise activities of the Army, with a focus at tackling contemporary and future security threats to the nation. The presidential directive was to evolve a professional, well-respected, highly motivated and people-centric Nigerian army that will have the requisite capability and capacity to respond adequately in a timely manner to solve the myriad of contemporary and future security threats. General, to this year's Chief of Army Staff Conference comes with a record of a milestone. The army has on display its first military hardware vehicle we're told is manufactured from scratch to finish in Nigeria. And the president proceeds to inspect and officially inaugurate it. The president is pleased with what he has seen. He commands the chief of army staff and other service chiefs to consolidate on the feet. He says the armed forces must work towards manufacture and sustainability of their hardware for operations. I have gone through conference program and it's my belief that the conference we generate new strategies and concepts that will enhance sustainable fees in the country. Ezugu, according to the Army hierarchy, is manufactured using cutting edge technology and tested in difficult terrains such as burning worry in Kaduna State, among others. Ezugu is proudly made in Nigeria. We're told it's a mine resistant ambush protected vehicle. The commissioning by Mr. President is expected would open a new vista in the manufacture of military hardware in the nation's armed forces. Tessem Akende, TVC News, Kaduna. It's quite interesting. That's not a news update for this hour. Weather update is up next.
that too, uh, starting with the punch this Wednesday morning. The punch says confusion as federal government plans turning grazing reserves to ranches. Administration shortlists seven states for remodeling scheme. Federal government's project alien to us, say Plato Benue. Buhari unveils made in Nigeria war vehicles, promises security. Controversy over Lagos clampdown on OPE motorcycles. Three die, shops raised as Yoruba Hausa clash in Oshu. Uh, federal government plans 350 wagons, six, 36 coaches for Lagos Ibadan Railway. Dabiri Erewa condemns attack on Nigerian traders in Ghana. Lagos CP rescues abducted corpa, arrests Kim Kingpin. <clears throat> It also says on the cover of the punch that uh, Fowler's tenure ends Sunday. Buhari yet to write Senate. And uh, finally, I'll end with this one. It says uh, 2.5 billion naira libel. Atiku files deposition against Buhari's aid on Ocho. That's what we have on the cover of the punch. Mm. We've got The Guardian here, Wednesday, December 4. Uh, residents flee town of Kanu's lawyer after policeman's death. Uh, we want him over murder of two officers. IPOB alleges plots to kill counsel. And Ohanese condemns move by security agents. Uh, on page three in The Guardian this morning, you will read Senate in rowdy session over seeding of waterways to secure waterway security to Israeli firm. Again, six die in Bochi auto crash. Also on page three. And so on, Lu names Onikon Stadium after first Lagos governor, that's uh, Wobolaji Johnson. The federal government to spend 412.6 billion naira on 524 roads, bridges nationwide. And uh, Senate, Chambers, uh, Senate chamber suffers neglect despite yearly allocations. Technical glitch Mars plenary session. Lawan flouts rule as a Bay seeks repairs. And finally, police boss rescues kidnapped core member in Lagos. And that's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. I have the Daily Sun here. Uh, and it says, we've uncovered plot to destabilize Nigeria, say the DSS. Federal government committed to ending impunity, uh, according to Malami. Southeast governors defend Air Peace chairman, pledged to support airline to overcome U.S. issue. INEC presses for electoral offenses commission works with NAS to actualize this as Mahmoud says electoral impunity high, unbearable. IPOB raises alarm over safety of Namdi Kanu's lawyer. Uh, police declare him wanted over alleged murder of two cops. Uh, Ohan is a, a draw for react. And uh, federal government condemns fresh attack on Nigerians in Ghana. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Sun. Yeah, we've got the Vanguard next now with the headline, a Papa gridlock. Two killed as task team truck drivers clash. Mob invades Vanguard premises. Wow, a gridlock worsens. We are on the trail of airing a policeman, a Lagos CP says. And uh, a few other stories. Loretta Onoche caused me trauma, Atiko tells court. And Saolu renames Onikon Stadium after Mobolaji Johnson. U.S. banks hate speech bill as Kayamo. Pandef differ. Wow. Uh, three die shops raised as Hausa Yoruba clash in Oshun community. And six arrested in Ghana for attacking Nigerian traders. We're, not, we're no threat to national security, OMSL tells Senate. And up here, a few stories. Uh, so we kicks as DSS applies to transfer him to correctional facility. We've uncovered plots to destabilize Nigeria, DSS says. And finally, oil price volatility threatening Nigerian content development, and NPC says. And that's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. I believe we have time for the Nigerian Tribune. And it says here, why PDP lost Kogi Bayelsa, according to APC. APC shielding election violence perpetrators, uh, PDP alleges. Uh, Nigeria now experiencing civilian coup d'etat, Dixon laments. Uh, banks sack 3,500 workers in nine months, according to an NBS report. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Someone who names uh, Onikon Stadium after Mabolaji Johnson. Uh, Tribune stands for truth, equity, justice for all, uh, says Alafi. 
uh, on the elections, smart card reader won't be jettisoned, say INEC. And finally, this decade likely to be the hottest on record, according to a United Nations expert. And that continues on page six. That's what we have on the cover of the Nigerian Tribune. Yeah, that's about all that we can take on the newspaper headlines uh, for this hour. Mm. There's more after yes, this. Indeed. Yes, indeed. It's time for us to take a traffic update and find out what the roads are looking like this morning. Uh, well, from time, Wednesdays can be here or there on the roads, but uh, when it comes to traffic in Lagos, you just never know what might be happening. That's why we have this particular segment just for you. And we do our best to give you all the updates you need to make your journey a little bit smoother. I have the route from Bega bus stop all the way to Marina in my hands now. And it does seem to be um, not a very, very tedious journey. Uh, it's one of those journeys where you're going to pause for a bit, but then uh, keep it going. Uh, all in all, you should spend about 55 minutes on the road if you're going from Bega bus stop all the way to Marina. The major trouble spots uh, include just around Ogudu Road. Uh, around uh, Ketu Ogudu Road, then of course uh, the Bagada Junction uh, that heads off from Oworoshonki. And then of course uh, it's, well the map I'm, I have here is asking me to avoid Third Mainland Bridge because apparently it's going to take a lot longer should I decide to take that particular route. It's leading me straight onto Ikorodu Road uh, via <coughs> Bagada and uh, it's taking me uh, th straight through Onikwan Food Fadei and of course uh, Jibo over to Alaka and uh, it's Alaka that there is quite a bit of tension this morning on that particular route. It's going to take you about six or seven minutes uh, to get through that Alaka area and on to Echo Bridge. Now Echo Bridge seems to be quite free and it does seem like uh, it's slow moving but it is still moving so should you leave Ojodu Bega right now uh, heading to Marina on the island, you should be on the road for about 55 minutes, give or take. I'll be moving on to some other routes now. Hopefully, um, Tokbe and Yomi have a few online updates for us. Yeah, uh, we have, we've got uh, one or two here. Um, <coughs> I don't know what Twitter handle you're on, um, Tokbe. I'm Lagos Traffic Reports. Uh, Lagos Traffic Reports. Okay, I'm on, I am on Traffic Butter, so I'm just going to take one or two here. Okay. Um, one second. Okay, Abeokuta Express Road uh, is free a little bit at some point, but uh, they're complaining about uh, Ilezik, uh, which has been blocked, uh, I think, for repairs. So that's causing a gridlock. That's causing a gridlock. There's, there's portions of that road that have been sealed off uh, for repairs. So please be careful along that road. And uh, there's gridlock on Ikeja along so also please be careful there. If you have alternative routes, you can also pass uh, those areas as well. So uh, it's Wednesday, so it's not too bad, but there are some portions of the road that have some, some gridlock. I don't know if you have any other. It was the same know. thing that you just shared. Okay. Yeah. Okay, There's, uh, there, are, there are one or two uh, areas here. People are still complaining about the Ojota axis. Uh, that's the Ojota bus stop itself that has, you know, really, really bad roads. I know that the repairs have begun. It's taken a little while. You know, let's just be a bit patient in that axis as well. So right now, this morning, it might take you 25 minutes at a Jota bus stop if you're going from uh, the yeah. top to the bottom. So please be careful and be patient. It, it as does well. seem like there's some uh, construction happening along the expressway where Alakwaire is. Uh, so apparently they're breaking off that middle, um, what do they call that, uh, that part of the road in the center. The median. Uh, the, the median, median. Yeah. yes. They're breaking it down, uh, hopefully in order to expand the road and reduce the amount of greenery there. Uh, it was basically greenery, shrubbery, and, and a lot of amazing 
you know, plants and everything that were there before. But because of the traffic situation, I believe they're trying to expand that particular road, which is, I think, a good idea. Uh, if you're heading west along the Lekki uh, Expressway, um, especially from Aja bus stop, you're going to have a one hour, 12 minute journey if you're heading to Victoria Island's uh, last bus stop, that's uh, Bonnie Camp. Now, along the road, I don't see much traffic apart from where the Chevron toll gate is. A lot of people have decided to take the alternative route through Chevy View behind, uh, yeah, that alternative route that goes through the back. And by the time you come out at Lecky Conservation Center, you're going to spend about 20 minutes at a whole stretch that will take you all the way uh, down to <clears throat> Elegushi Junction. So the Elegushi Junction will slow you down. Um, it will slow you down where all those churches are as well around Tickle Bay area. And uh, you'll probably have a little bit of a delay uh, around the Marwa bus stop as well. But all in all, um, the next traffic spot will be the toll gate, which will slow you down for about 10 more minutes. Right along uh, the Ozumba and Way Road, it's slow moving, but it is still moving uh, all the way past Falomo, past the Civic Center, past Falomo and past law school, just expected to be slow moving, but you will get to your destination at Bunny Camp in an hour and 12 minutes. And that's uh, the updates that I have on the roads right now. I'm gonna be heading into the kitchen to meet the team. Mm. So what's up, Topper? Oh, a lot of things <laughs> are, are, are happening. Which one? Oh yes, there's something I wanna share. So I saw, I saw this, on social media, yes, yeah, okay. um, this morning, on my way to work, about um, this lady who was on her way to work. This happened yesterday. She was on her way to work, on her way back from work mm. at about past 7 p.m. and she was attacked by robbers. Oh, and wow. she who was driving? Um, no, I, they didn't state really. Who stole her laptop and stabbed her in the neck. And they rushed her to a hospital nearby at Bagada. Now the hospital, said if they didn't provide the police reports, they mm. were not going to attend to her. And as mm. I'm speaking to you, this girl is dead. Oh, and now people, her friends on social media, Twitter, actually saying how nice a person she is, how amazing she was, rather, because mm. she's late now. And I mean, this is just one person that we are hearing about. And I think, mm. to be very honest, I think the government or whoever is in the position mm. to, to handle this should put like a law that states that treats the person first before asking for police report because I feel I feel like the rate the amount of deaths we have in this country has gone to the point where someone dying almost doesn't even feel like death anymore like they could just ignore it I think it's, I think it's really really terrible and we've talked about this on, on the show before where um, you have an emergency situation yeah and you, you know somebody is taken to the hospital and the of course like a trauma center yeah. you know, an emergency trauma center that's what you exist for for when people are in trauma. Yeah. So whether it's a gunshot wound or a stabbing or anything like that, that is why you exist. That's why your doors are open. Yeah. And you know, for, for you to then get there, you can see the person bleeding. You can see that this person's life is, is in danger and then you still say, go back and get a, a police, police report. report. So it, it's really, really bad. Yeah. I don't know how we can, we can tweak those laws to be able to... There's a way that you can track people. If somebody yeah. has a gunshot wound, you're not going to patch him up and then and next minute he'll, he'll run, run I mean, away. it's possible that they can even treat the person and like keep the person in custody yeah. till the police comes and they start investigating. Even the if case. they don't do that. I'm even saying that, you know, why don't you save the life first? First, yes. Why don't you save the life first? You never know, especially if whoever brought the person says, oh, he was shot or oh, there was a situation and, you know, sometimes even, even people who get hit by stray bullets, yes. just random stray bullets at the bus stop, you can't treat the guy. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You, you say, no, you, you must get a police report. H how are you supposed to tell the police, like, oh, he, he was standing at the bus stop and a stray bullet hit him? Like so, him. You, you, these are just little things. People, we need to really, really be more, more conscious and, and really, really appreciate the value of life. Of life you know, yes. I know the hospital is doing a lot, but this area, this particular area, it keeps recurring almost on a weekly basis now, mm -hmm. where oh, somebody comes to the hospital and because the, the, the doctors and the hospital administration is afraid, there's something that they're afraid of. It's not just, yes. yeah, so there's because something that they're afraid believe. of because they keep saying that, no, we can't touch, mm. not even a gunshot victim now, a stabbing victim, they can't, it's crazy. I, I've never seen anything life like first. I mean, yeah. whoever has the power should 
in that so position. So now the young, the young lady has lady died. Lady has died. It, it, do, it does feel a little alarming, uh, but in other countries, well, at least if you want to compare it to what happens in the U.S., you know, there are always security around, and the security could even handcuff the patient to the bed. The bed, yeah. Uh, if, for instance, you know, they're afraid of those kind of situations where yeah. the patient could run away or something yeah. like that. And um, then also, uh, they try, because there's a database for fingerprints, Etc. Etc. They could try and find out who this individual is, find a background on who you know the person is. Um, but I wish I could find out if someone could tweet it, maybe find out what it is that the hospitals are exactly afraid of. Yeah, exactly. Um, if so we, we could know what get to the bottom is. of that, maybe we would have a, a different perspective. Yes. Um, but. It's been going on for so long. For so, so many long. solutions. Like you can yeah. treat the person and then file the police report. Exactly. That we received a gunshot yeah. victim. Mm. Mm. It's <laughs> you something. Know? You know, we received a gunshot mm. victim yeah. um, at uh, 11 p.m. Yeah. last night. We have treated him. Mm. Uh, he's yeah. still with us, still with us or yeah. he escaped, whatever it is, True. but you would have filed a report I mean, and, and taken his of, photograph and all of that. Yeah, yeah this yeah, era yeah. of social media where everybody's tweeting, everybody mm. has a say. Mm. If something like that goes mm. on social media, I'm sure it's going to trend. Mm. And at least your hospital will be famous, you mm. get more... <laughs> exactly, I mean, I mean, you treated a gunshot victim. Exactly. But, you know, and in the morning, the guy mm. stood up and ran away. <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not Maybe likely going to happen. Away, yeah. it's, it's not likely going to happen that, you know, it, it will be probably one in ten. Yeah. And maybe he's run, fleeing the scene of a crime and, yeah. you know, suddenly went to the hospital mm -hmm. to be... And it's not even likely that an armed robber would take who himself. was shot would take himself, himself to a hospital. hospital. It's I not mean. likely. So, mm -hmm. really, it's people who actually need, need this help, help that actually go mm -hmm. to the hospital. It's, you know? it's, it's, it's actually very uh, confusing, but uh, it's something I will definitely look into. Yes. Um, I'm Trust thinking about... No, I actually think I, I, I will. I'll probably ask around. You know, we have a, an amazing news team here at TVC. Yeah. I'll ask questions on that. But uh, I was thinking, is it not possible for hospitals to have some kind of relationship with the nearest police, police stations station. where they themselves are obligated to inform the, you know, the, the officers on duty yeah. yes. and make sure that they come as soon as they find such a patient yeah. or they receive such a patient. Yes. Uh, because in the end, the patient is probably too weak to even make a phone Honestly, call. Honestly, because I'm wondering you, you telling know, the so patients to bring a police report. How? Like, when where, where person is about to faint or a whatever. Number of hospitals have actually denied. Uh, there was mm. an incident, you know, the one we talked about, I think, in, in uh, July or so, mm. where they said they took someone to a hospital in GRE and the person was, the, the hospital declined to treat the person because they asked for a police report. Later in the morning, the, the, um, the hospital denied it that mm. Um, that they value the sanctity of life and that mm. they definitely would not have done that, but that they didn't have the facility mm. to, to, treat, look, after yeah, the to look after the patient. That's mm. what they said. Mm. You know? mm. uh, so I think you just, they're just little things that you know just stand you out. Mm. And I mm. think any hospital that will do this will definitely stand out, like you yeah. said. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, but I, I, I'm not sure if it's even the same. Well, okay, we're still talking about hospitals. Up for the, is it the same policy for general hospitals as well as private? The same you policy. Know? Goodness the me. same policy. I think oh, wow. a lot of them feel, and it's happened before, but that was probably like in the late 80s and in the 90s, oh, yeah? oh. where, you know, okay, I heard this story. I don't know if it's true. Mm. Okay, so um, robbers were fleeing the scene of a crime. Mm. Okay. You know, gunshots exchanged with uh, police, and then the robbers then went, carried one of their colleagues to the hospital mm. and put the... At gunpoint, the nurses and the doctors mm -hmm. were treating, <laughs> and then after treating them, they carried their colleague and, and went away. But mm -hmm. that was just that was one random, yeah. <laughs> like a movie, but right? That was, that was in the eighties, in the nineties, in the, the mid nineties. I think ninety. I think mm. I think I was writing Jam around that time. <laughs> Daddy Yum Yum. Wow. You are a child. Wow. <laughs> Daddy Yum Yum. You're not even born. Speaking of Jam, Jam is trending. Yes, Jam okay, is why trending. Why is it hilarious? So they're trending because someone was. Um, mm -hmm. tweeted that she um, she or she tried to get Jam to um, yeah. for, to correct a name and uh -huh. it was required that he pay 2005 but we'll talk about no this. way that's not even the I'll high point but name. we will talk about <laughs> we have to it. take a quick <laughs> break <laughs> All right, we'll be back after this Uh, welcome back. Now, you know that World AIDS Day was on Sunday. 
and uh, lots of things have been going on, different kinds of activities here and there. We'll have somebody special joining us uh, this morning, uh, Evelyn. Uh, she's of the Nation newspaper, and she's the founder of Project TASA, which stands for Take a Stand Against AIDS. And she's going to be talking to us about uh, this great initiative and a lot more this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, Evelyn. Thank you so much. I know much. that you do uh, your spoken word and your poetry and all of that, but this is a special project and something that yeah. you're very, very passionate about. So tell us about Project Tasha. Uh, project Tasha is a campaign I started to mark my birthday this year, July 21st. Um, being an artist, I thought it wise to use my art to drive different causes. Last year, I pushed forward um, the message, um, non-violence election. Mm. And this year, I'm pushing um, the spread of AIDS, I'm speaking against the spread of AIDS among young people, mm. adolescents and young adults. And um, I thought of using my art. I started with an online multimedia exhibition and a poetry mm. that, that has run for six months wow. now. And, uh, but we're taking it a, a step further. We're putting the message in the mouth of young people to begin to advocate, to raise at least 5,000 advocates between now and the next World Health uh, World, um, AIDS Day. 5,000. So, yes, yeah, so to, um, tomorrow, 200, over 200 students are going to march you know, along the streets of Lagos, you know, spreading the word that people should be aware, go for tests and know their status. And mm -hmm. of course, young people should be involved. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll move to a symposium where we'll have all student panel from GS to SS3. Instead of having those old, old. Those old uh, professors uh, talking, talking to us and you know, talking above the, the children's head. So it's now young people that yes, are taking charge. That they are taking charge. Mm. And um, you know, the um, Convention for the Rights of the Child is 30. And one of the things the initiative UNICEF did was to give the, the young people voices to talk. And I'm happy on that to give them voices to also talk about what has the Convention of the Rights of the Ch Child the right to access mm. of treatment, the right to life. How can that also be brought into um, young people who are already living with the virus, how they can access treatment, and then make it easy for young people to come out and even go for testing. Mm. And then legislation that will allow them also to be able to perhaps go for testing and make it easy for them to access so that they, the fight against stigma as well. Mm. So these are some of the issues that will be addressed from the point of view of young people. Of the young people. Yeah. One of the things that, that, that I've been curious about, I think uh, recently it looks like um, the issue of HIV and AIDS um, has taken the, the back burner. It looks like other issues have come up. Uh, people talk about maternal health a lot now. Uh, people talk about child health and, and uh, uh, different other issues that have, that have taken the fore with, with the SDGs. But what do you think accounts for the fact that uh, nobody's really pushing any HIV messaging anymore uh, and all of that, even though people are still contracting uh, the disease? I think when, we, when, when the retrovirus came and um, um, drugs came and people started, you know, going to, government made it easy for people to access, um, and then people started the message that um, you can live and be whoever you want to be, even if you're positive. Mm. And then people started... Um, getting to the point where their virus were non-detectable and they were living healthy. Mm. So everybody thought everything was okay. Mm. And everybody just relaxed and said, yes, we have achieved. And um, Nigeria, I think there was a time Nigeria achieved that point where a lot of those who were um, infected with HIV, you know, came to the point of now being able to live, live their, their life. So everybody just relaxed. But we have a teeming population of young people, adolescents and young people who are sexually active. Their parents will not agree. Mm. Parents will say, no, their children are innocent. But they are, they're constantly really exploring. Mm. And with the social media and everything out there for them to explore, it's, nobody is paying attention. And many of them don't have information. More, many of them do not have in, information. And of course, how many of them can go to the, 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 the pharmacies and buy a condom mm. at that age, adolescent? So a lot of things are happening. And I'm saying, let the government, I'm trying to stir up awareness campaign and mm. force the, the key players, the stakeholders to begin to look at starting off new, reawakening the campaign. Mm. against and, and keeping, the, and the, keeping these young people safe, safe. Mm. Really, really really important so this 200 people i mean i know you have a target students. of five uh, yeah. students i know you have a target of 5000 yes. in the next one year which yeah. is which is i think amazing 
What do you hope to achieve with them, starting with these 200? Uh, do you hope that they will be now become ambassadors for other children? Uh, talk to us about uh, how the process will be like. Yes, I, I, I started when I when I started when I decided that beyond doing um, using my art, I was going to take the message and put it in the mouth of young people. The thought came to me. I started doing research, looking for advocates already among them, who were not just NG, linked to NGOs out there and CSOs. Mm. And interestingly, I found one in African Church Model College. Mm. And um, I, Ogba College Road, and they have an uh, the model anti AIDS club mm. of over 50 students who from GS1 to SS3 are already advocates, and then you have some that have passed out. Mm. So in the last four years, they have been advocating, mm. even in their school. So I thought, let me start from, start from them. From there, I in, in this program raise more advocates. Some other schools will be joining and see how working with the club. Um, coordinator, how they can establish these clubs in other schools. So from those 200, we hope to get at least, if not anything, up to 150 who will come to say, okay, they are advocates, they are joining the club. The, those who will go back to their schools to say, look, we are going to form this club there. Mm -hmm. And they will start having activities. And then um, I, Hello Lagos is um, one of our partners, a major partner. So they are going to be there also. So they will, they are, they will, they will be there also to give trainings and all if they need and advice mm. as well. So we're already building a network. That, that's really, really amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for what you're Thank doing. You so so talk, talk to us uh, finally about, uh, so tomorrow's the date. Uh, yes. what's, where's the location? Um, it's at um, African Church Model College um, at um, College Road, mm. Ogba. Okay. Just at the end of College Road, you, the school is there, and it start, the rally will start by nine. We will be done by then. Immediately, we go into the symposium, the symposium. that would also feature the all student panel and then adult panel to address some of the issues as well, and then exhibitions, um, all other it's artistic. Be a, yeah, amazing, it's amazing fun day. time. Thank you so much, um, even for, for what you're for doing, and me. hopefully, when you hit five thousand, you come back on the show uh, with a few of the, your advocates and yes. ambassadors as well. Thank you. I'll be willing to yeah. do that. Well Thank done. You well done. So much. All right, we're heading over to Tokwe now, who's with Winifred, a singer. Hey Thank guys. you, Yomi. Now, I am with the beautiful Winnie Fred. She is a singer and songwriter who started her music career at a very young age from the church choir. And in 2014, she released two songs, a gospel and a cover to Inyaya's Applaudy Say. Then in 2017, she moved to Lagos and dropped two songs, Dear John and Run, which gained repeated plays in the just concluded Big Brother Niger house. Today, she's going to perform her latest song titled, Tell Me. Now, tell me all about <laughs> this song. Okay, so tell me, it's my, my first um, love song. Okay. Yeah, it's a song I wrote to my future boyfriend. Oh, future. I, I, just got, I just got out of a bad relationship. Oh, wow. So the song was to tell my boyfriend that See, don't tell me you won't break my heart or tell me you won't um, leave me and run away. Or. So it's just like a song everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell the girl or the guy telling the love interest, don't break my heart. Oh, there, are lot of, there are a lot of Nigerian guys we should be telling, <laughs> don't break our heart. Yes. <laughs> oh, but I, uh, we, we heard, um, we read that you, um, you, your last song was featured in the Big Brother house. Now, how was yes. that for you? <laughs> when I heard my song in Big Brother house, I was watching it on TV. I yeah. was screaming. I was screaming. <laughs> like the whole world, they heard my voice. Oh. I was so happy. Okay, but now I'm going to have to go off stage. So you okay. tell all those brothers out there that they shouldn't break our hearts. Okay. Blow us away then. <laughs> breakfast show we still have great amazing content lined up just for you yeah and we know you guys are gonna love us forever mm. based on the song that you just heard you know you had to I'm just trying in. to link it he had to yeah throw that create in. that you know a link she wasn't singing to you Yomi. she wasn't she was singing to she's a child Pam. she's a child yeah <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> well it's, yeah. a, it's the second hour of the show and uh,
Well, uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. My name is Yomi Uope. And I'm Titi Lara Oyinso. Now we're live streaming and you have this option. It's right there if you need to leave watch, uh, where you're, uh, go somewhere right now. Uh, TVCentertainment.tv is the website. And of course on Facebook Live at TVC Connect. We can't wait to see your comments, especially as long as you use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, and if you're wondering why Titi is a bit chill this morning, mm. she's just, she's a bit chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's in she's in a, a zone. Yeah, just Her I'm, voice I'm, is, I'm yeah. hoping that I'll get some coffee sometime soon. You know, <laughs> Yomi, if you have any, please uh, hand some uh, over. I think but, I finished my cup. Yeah, but. yeah. He had coffee. He didn't give me any. It's fine. But you can always download our so mobile if, if this app. This is a water matter. We'll find you some water. Really. It's not what At I some want. point. It's coffee I want. It's oh, okay. coffee I want. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Anywhere in the world, you can watch us if you have our mobile app. And uh, you'll be watching an amazing chef enter the kitchen with us today. Yeah, very Once shortly. Mm -hmm. Very shortly. Tokwe has still not done anything in the kitchen. Uh, oh, you have no idea what I Despite everything that we gave you. Mm -hmm. I've been working. You just wow. haven't seen it. I'm working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And when Chef Yede gets here, ooh, yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, it's going to be special. Super special today. Looking forward to it. Now, Hopefully. still to come on the show. Our home makeover segment starting very, very soon. We have a uniquely skilled interior designer, Anita Ekata Onumere. She'll be in the building giving us some tips on what to do in our homes to brighten them up a bit. Uh, also coming uh, to back to join us for a musical performance this morning, award-winning lyric baritone opera singer, John Paul. Yes, indeed. Now, we also have our nutrition segment and we'll be having certified personal nutritionist on the show today. She'll be talking about nutrition and healthy lifestyles. <laughs> and then we move on to, uh, of course, uh, the relationship talk mm -hmm. uh, this morning. And relationship expert Sandra Odufadere is going to be joining us uh, to talk to us about uh, secrets in a marriage. The one you brought with you, <laughs> and, and the, the one, one you you started <laughs> the one you building. created in the marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so which one? Which yeah. is which? Should you tell? So, would you tell uh, the person you're getting married to everything? Like, mm. okay, hmm. all your secrets, hmm. everything in the past that allowed to break down, uh, break down, break down. Um, or do you wait until they find out why? <laughs> yeah. Wow, Titi. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, uh, the okay. So, for for my relationship, because I'm in, I've been in the industry for quite a while. Yeah. I was in the industry for a long time before I met my husband, and he's also in the industry. Right. So there were not many, that many secrets out there that he did not already know about no. or yeah. have okay. some inkling about. Um, and so it was easy to find Yeah, it was to easy to kind of balance it out. Um, but I don't know, I actually don't know if I could remember all my secrets. And then they're not as secrets. At then, before, mm. I'm talking about before we got married. Oh, okay. So there's, um, there's something about having someone that is on the same page with you and is understanding enough to, you know, understand that, hey, uh, this is the, the industry my wife is in and she's probably been exposed to all sorts yeah. of things in the past. Yeah. So it's about having an open mind. Mm. It's so easy. Uh, but imagine if I married a doctor. <laughs> imagine yeah, if no, I married a doctor. Very, very strange. For, <laughs> for me, uh, my, my, my mother-in-law mm. told my wife that there's only two things that you need to find out from him. Okay. Has he been married before? Oh, Does wow. he have a child? Oh. And what is his genotype? Oh. <laughs> Everything else you leave Nothing in the past. Oh, know, that's, so. a cool wow. that's a cool mother-in-law. That's a cool mother-in-law. That's a cool mother-in-law. Really? Just make sure that he doesn't have Yo. a child. Mm. You know, that kind of. Or if he has a child, he should show you the child. Yeah, like, okay. okay. I make mean, sure that the it? mother is not in the picture. Uh, exactly. So yeah. So, Interesting. Uh, that was the. Any, anything that else was you know. Secondary. Secondary. <laughs> Uh, okay. Something for you to think about. Uh, I will think about yeah. that. We <laughs> have to go to the news now. <coughs> Brian is on standby for us. Welcome to the news again. The Department of State <laughs> Services has uncovered a plot to cause a breakdown of law and order in various parts of Nigeria. It says the plan is to instigate protest, mass action and violence with a view to causing anarchy and destabilizing the country. And according to the DSS, the planners want, they, uh, want to cause chaos simultaneously in major cities and in the federal capital in the coming weeks. It has now issued an alert and warns the alleged plotters to desist from their plan. 
Heads of academic and public institutions are now advised to warn their students and employees against engaging in acts that, caused, uh, that could cause public uh, disorder. And after nearly 15 months in detention without charge, a former Navy officer and his wife can now breathe the fresh air outside an underground cell. Captain Dada Labinjo was arraigned on Monday after 21 others and he were handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Let's bring you a timeline of major events in this trial. The ordeal of the Labinjos, who were both serving naval officers, reportedly started around 2001. They were charged and sentenced by a general court-martial for disobeying orders. And then they headed to the Federal High Court in Lagos for a review and reinstatement, which they won. The Navy then headed to the Court of Appeal in 2004. But after several adjournments, the court dismissed the appeal for lack of diligent prosecution. And in 2012, the Supreme Court unanimously upheld that decision. In 2014, Captain Labinjo emerged president of the Nigeria Ship Owners Association, but the body has suffered a prolonged crisis over the years. In September 2018, the Navy arrested the Labinjos and 20 of their staff, as well as their vessel. Their almost 15-month-old underground detention without being charged with any offense enraged rights activists. In August this year, the Federal High Court in Lagos ordered his release. And later that month, his wife, Lieutenant Commandant Labinjo, and four others were arraigned. Finally, the captain and the others were arraigned on Monday. The plea did not guilty to two counts of dealing in petroleum products without license within the Nigerian maritime domain and the Gulf of Guinea. Justice Muslim Hassan granted the accused bill in the sum of 10 million naira, with one surety who must own a landed property in Lagos and show evidence of three years tax payment. Trial continues in February 2020. Well, OWL's Intelligence Committee voted along party lines on Tuesday night to approve a report that found evidence of President Donald Trump's misconduct and obstruction of Congress is overwhelming. The a report released earlier Tuesday will form the backbone of the impeachment proceedings against the president and charges that Trump's con uh, conduct toward Ukraine uh, compromised national security. The votes will send the reports to the House Judiciary Committee as that panel considers moving forward on articles of impeachment. The 300-page report from the House Intelligence Committee sets the stage for the impeachment of a U.S. president for the third time in history. And Democratic White House hopeful Kamala Harris is dropping out of the presidential race. The 55-year-old California senator, a vocal critic of President Donald Trump, was once seen as a rising star within the party, but she could not cement her fleeting position in the top tier of candidates alongside Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Ms. Harris entered the race as a leading contender, launching her bid to a crowd of 22,000 in Oakland, California, at the beginning of the year. She reached digits, uh, double digits in the polls after attacking Mr. Biden on the issue of race during a live TV debate in June, but she began to lag in recent months. And as a news update for this hour, stay tuned for Sports News. Welcome back. Now, Anita Ekata Onwumere is a uniquely skilled interior designer. She has over half a decade experience with interior design solutions. In 2015, she started Interiors by McCoy, which offers completion of carcass to fully furnished homes. She's here today to give us tips on things we can do to beautify our spaces, especially with regard to mistakes, the most common mistakes people make yes. when trying to design their homes. Yes. Welcome, Anita. Thank you so much. I have to ask, you know, uh, when you say common mistakes, it feels like almost everyone has made some mistake or the other when it comes to designing their space. Uh, but what are the most common mistakes that you can make reference to? Okay, um, the first common mistake people make while designing their home is buying furniture too big or too small for their space. Now, you do not want to buy a big furniture for a small space because it's going to look choked, it's going to look cluttered, mm. and you do not want to buy a small furniture for a big space because it's going to look out of place. It's just like you're putting something empty and banner on your space, mm. and a home should not represent any of the above. Okay, so um, when you, in terms of scale, um, how large should my sofa be? 
in comparison with my space. Okay, so for instance, if we use this piece of paper okay. as a, maybe this is my living room, for instance, how large should my sofa be? If we could just, you know, give okay. me a perspective. Okay, so you have to think about where the door is, first of all. The door? Yes, the okay. door is very important because you okay. find that at most places, you see your doors either in the middle or side, okay. sideway. Okay. So if your door is in here, mm. you have to place your sofa somewhere around here and play around with little decorations around here. Okay, so why is it that my sofa should be here as opposed to maybe somewhere here? Now, it depends on your space and if and the kind of person you are. If it's a family person mm. and you have a lot of space, of course, you need bigger sofas mm. so you can go for a larger part of the house where you can put your sofa around it. You made reference to the door. Yes. Why is the door and the sofa important? Why is it important to think of my door when I'm thinking of my sofa? Okay, because you need to um, go in and come out from the space. People are going to go in and come out and you mm. don't want obstructions. You don't want when someone opens a door and, you know, the sofa is just there or they have to turn around to come in and sit in the sofa. Okay, so you sh there should be a clear path between the door and the sitting area. Yes. Okay, but then what about my media wall, you know, um, like where my TV is, for instance? What if I don't have a wall that will face the sofa, you know, where my TV could be? Just an example. Okay, you know, the structure of the Nigerian home cannot be predictable. However, you have to play around with things. Mm. Wherever your sofa is should be straight up to your TV <coughs> wall. So you also <coughs> have to consider mm. that as well. Mm. It's important for you to have a clear viewing of your TV station. Okay. Mm. All right, so now we've talked about proportion. Yes. That's one of the first mistakes people make. Either too big or too small furniture in the space. But what's the next most common mistake people make? Now it's designing at a go, at a go. Okay. A lot of people are making this mistake because it's almost Christmas and there's a time frame. People are trying to get their homes ready for the new year. And this is a common mistake because you realize that you're buying things that do not really fit your home. Okay. Or probably you're buying things out of, oh, it's fashionable, I should just have this. Mm. And a home should not entail that. It should be pieces of things you love that are functional and people can also people around you can also use them as well okay so when you design at a go you do not have a time frame mm. usually you just go and you pick up anything random and you put it in your home okay this should always be a time frame for sourcing and a time frame for delivering and setting up your home okay so you mentioned time frame but you didn't say exactly what that time frame should be okay let's say i have a two bedroom okay. flat uh, and it's just i'm just looking for two beds a sofa and maybe some a center table or something like that. Are you saying you should take a long time for me to find all those things, even though I can find all of those in one shop? These exactly. Days? Mm -hmm. That is why most people buy things that they do not really love. You find it in one shop. It's not supposed to be in one shop. Oh. Carefully take out your time and select the items you love in your space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those, that's two mistakes now. Yes. Uh, but is there a third? Yes, there is a third. Mm. Now, a lot of people do not test run their colors on their wall before they paint them. Okay. Like I've had clients who say, okay, for example, I like the color black and you put black in their home. And they're like, I feel claustrophobic. There's something about this color and it doesn't sit well with me. Okay. Now, if you put sample paintings on the wall, prior before the painting, you have an idea and you, okay, you say, okay, you have options to play with. You can mm. probably look at it for a week or two mm. and you, then you decide what colors that works best for you. Okay. Mm. So I've heard before from some other, you know, experts that have come on the show that um, the color should reflect your personality. Exactly. All right. Do you, you agree with this? Exactly. Mm. Yes, it should reflect your personality, but you should be comfortable in the home as well. Okay. Remember it's a home. It's a place you feel relaxed. Mm. So you have to look at the colors. Colors are very important. Mm. Like I like serene areas and I, I love white because I want a place where I can just, when I get home, I know it's a peaceful zone and I just feel comfortable. So I always um, encourage people to choose colors they can live with because there's a difference between liking a color and living with it. Uh, speaking of living with it, in most homes now, there are very young children who like put their hands and fingers on the walls and everything. You mentioned white right now. Yes. White wouldn't be functional for me, okay. even though it might make me feel peaceful in my space. What, what advice would you give me? I would say you can go for white, but you can go for a satin paint, which is cleanable. 
Okay. That way you can maintain your peace and at the same time you like the white, you're exploring the color and your children doesn't have to get it dirty. Mm. Yeah, you, it's not just fingers though. <laughs> what about the biros and markers and crayons that yes. end up on the wall? It's still an issue. Yes, there are, all that, there are paints out there mm. that are cleanable. Okay. So you do not have to worry about that. All right then. Yes. Okay, so that's, it's really interesting. So one of the first mistakes you said is space management and uh, getting the right type of furniture for a space. Yes. You also mentioned uh, color just now. Yes. Uh, but you also talked about, uh, there was a third one that we mentioned. Designing uh, at design a go. Designing at a go. Yes. Picking up things in one store. Yes. Is there any last uh, piece of advice? Okay, I'd say um, take your time, mm. design your home, make sure you're choosing pieces you love, pieces you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to do with anybody but you, mm. specifically you. Mm. And uh, make sure they are also durable and you can live with them. All right then. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anita. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here with us today. Same and uh, please make sure you come back. I know there's still so much we can share. Yes. <laughs> Thanks and so much. finally, we have our chef in the building. We're heading over to the kitchen. Let's find out what she's making for breakfast. Ooh. Thank you, Titi. We have Chef Yede in the building. And today I'm on a mission, Operation what? Chef Yede Must Love Me. Uh, Guys, <laughs> you have to join this mission with me. This love <laughs> is happening today. Oh <laughs> my god. Good to have you here. Hey, <laughs> Chef Yede, what are your plans for me? No, no plans. <laughs> Trust me. So, what are we Good making morning. this morning? Good morning, darling. Today, we're making a meaty penny bolognese. Meaty penny bolognese. Now, how did you come up with that? So, basically, we all, they always use, like, normal spaghetti for bolognese. Yes. So, today, I'm just going to try and use um, the penny okay. and then meatballs, some peppers, some green peppers, garlic, Salt, onions, pickled, pickled onions, onions. <laughs> and some, uh, um, some um, cubes, sesame oil, fresh pepper, and then that's the mince meat. What's this here? It's a um, basil oil. Oh, okay. What's it's, the specialty of this? What, it's of always this good for pasta. Oh, okay. Um, that yeah. minus the normal oil. Yeah. What no, no, it's no, it's no, it's just like a, a garnish, basically. Okay. It's not like his uh, base, like oil or something. Oh, okay, okay, I get yeah, that. It's like basil leaf, but then yeah. it's the oil. oil of it. Yes. Oh, okay. And that, that will come out nice. So now, this is going to take us approximately how many minutes? Not long at all. Not long at all. So did you do anything to this minced meat? Yes, it's already been marinated with some parsley, okay. some maggi, salt, garlic, um, paprika. Okay. Yeah, and that's my special spice, mm -hmm. as I always say. I was say. going to say, today you didn't put the special spice I always do. And what that's do you have here? Um, tomatoes. Okay, nothing, just plain? Just plain tomatoes. tomatoes. Okay, so now have some pepper. You so. marinated this for how long? How long did you keep um, it? I did it last night, actually. Okay, now you know, um, I tried marinating, like, I think it was my first time marinating, mm -hmm. so they don't think I don't know how to cook. Please, I do. <laughs> my first time marinating, mm. I did it overnight, but then by morning, it was tasting, like the seasoning was too, I won't say it was too much, or it entered too much. Okay, so basically, I always feel like when I do, when I marinate overnight, yeah. sometimes in the morning, by the time you taste your marinade, it has reduced. So I'm surprised you're saying oh, that. Mine was, mine was Maybe what you added was a lot it, when you were marinating it. I was trying and to And then let me tell you a secret. You know yeah. the spices that you use? What did you use? I used those long bottle spices. Okay, they always have salt in them. So you always have to taste them first. They can oh. say it's paprika, they can say it's this, yeah. but they always have salt in them. Can you spice and all that? So if you're not careful, you just keep pouring them, thinking and in your head that you're just putting spice, spice. but you're putting salt. So that's, that's, that's the reason. I decided, I decided to do like just natural fresh ginger, fresh garlic. But now that you've told me, I will definitely try some chef duties this Christmas. <laughs> okay, so that's going to, are we parboiling it? Yes, we are. Okay, and normally they rinse pasta. Do they rinse this one or it doesn't get sticky no matter what? I'm gonna parboil and pour it out. And then you pour then oil put as some well. some cold water. I put some oil so it doesn't stick together. Stick together, okay. We're going to eventually leave that to boil, right? Yes. So keep turning. We are gonna leave it. Leave it to boil. So, yeah. Okay. Just and the then this bowl. white. Why did you use this tomatoes? Um, I want this tomatoes. Is just it's beautiful. Don't you think okay. so? I do think so. It looks like grapes. I mean, like who doesn't want this in their food? So you're gonna put it whole like this, or I'm just gonna, gonna cut it cut into it. two. Oh, okay. So it's gonna add color. Yeah, color and then. Is the taste juiciness. different from the normal big tomatoes? 
Um, I would say, like, I would comfortably eat this raw, like, yeah. continuously, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to uh, regular tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now that's going to boil. Yes. And when, when that boils and we rinse it, what do we do? We, we start to chop. We start to chop, chop, so chop. Get the... Today I will help you. Okay, so let's leave this to boil and prepare to start chopping. We're going to go on a break and we will be right back. Wake Up Nigeria is all about the healthy living and lifestyle. And we have in the building Adedamola Ladejobi. She's a certified personal nutritionist and weight loss expert. She is the founder and CEO of Ask Dams, a weight loss management health and wellness company. Today, she's going to be talking to us about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Now, if you are the picture of healthy living, I want to look like this picture all the time. <laughs> Uh, she looks stunning, doesn't she? Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so now, healthy living, we hear about it all the time. We talk about it a lot. But it feels like it, it could be easier, mm. you know, maybe if we were to, able to break it down into areas that we should focus on. Can you help with that? Yes, I sure can. And it's really not as difficult as people think it is. Um, there are three major aspects which a lot of us need to get right. And one is our nutrition. Okay. The other part is being physically active. And the other part is rest and stress management. So mm. um, I'll take it one by one. I'll try to take it one by one. But there's a lot to say on, on these three um, different aspects. But when it comes to nutrition, what it is is that a lot of us would rather spend money on eating junk. Okay. A lot of us think that healthy living or healthy eating has to do with eating just imported food. Mm. But apparently, not just apparently, actually, <laughs> actually, in reality, what it is is that we have to just make attempts to eat whole food. So when I say whole food, in terms of um, things that grow from the ground, so plants from the ground as opposed to things being made in a factory. Okay, okay. In fact, these days, there's so many ways to healthify our so-called street food and um, the regular snacks that we I eat. that word, healthy fight. Yes, I call it healthy fight. So healthy <laughs> fight so that, you know, it, um, it's of nutritional benefit to you. And what you're putting on the inside is what shows up on the outside. So I get a lot, a lot, a lot of people telling me or asking me, or ask them, what cream do you use or mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. soap do you use? And I try mm -hmm. to tell them, look, this is not about a cream or a soap. It's actually about what you put in. That's what you get out because you can spend thousands of dollars or naira on, you know, your lotion or whatever it is, but it just wouldn't come out on the surface if you're not eating right. Mm. So healthy nutrition, your micronutrients and your macronutrients. Let me not get too scientific about this. Okay, for those okay. who may be wondering <laughs> that, okay, isn't that too techy? Um, so your macronutrients are the nutrients that you should be eating in huge quantities. So okay. your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats. Okay. By the way, fat is not bad. They're good fats and they're bad, bad fats, fats. Yes. Mm. Um, and then your micronutrients are like your vitamin A, your vitamin B, C, D, and then you have your trace minerals and other, others like iron, potassium, magnesium, and all of that. Mm. That is nutrition mm. on one angle. Mm. And then you also have being physically active. Mm. So I just currently launched an app. Okay. Um, it's called the Ask Dams app. It's available mm -hmm. on Android and iOS. And this is not to advertise the app, by the way. <laughs> but a lot of people think that you need to be in a gym to be active or to stay healthy. You actually do not need a gym to mm. be healthy. Mm. But if you're a gym freak, by all means, please go to the gym. Mm. But not all of us can do that. So what I thought to myself was that, okay, what can we do to make the average man on the streets healthy? Not, not everybody can get a Fitbit. Yeah. And so the Ask Dams app is actually the very first app in Africa that you can actually download and track your steps with because so in other words if you have um, you know your phone your mobile yes. phone as you're walking along the road exactly the it tracks your steps and it tracks your the amount of calories that you're burning also okay but that's another thing so I don't like people thinking of activity in terms of oh I just ate um, maybe a meat pie that's 400 calories I need to burn burn 400 calories no if you live like that you're going to constantly be in fear of food and that's not what we want mm -hmm. you know that's not what that's that's not how it should be. Um, you should think of exercise as God's gift to your body, being active, because some people can't walk. They really wish they could. Some people yeah. can't, can't some have these issues with their Exactly, feet, their all sorts of things. So mm -hmm. exercise 
is not punishment. It's something that you should literally wake up in the morning and, and thank God for, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so the app does this. There are different ways, even little things as much as sweeping your house, mopping, and all of that they're stuff helps. Yes, they're all activities, but dancing. Then, but you did mention stress management. Yes, now, I'm, I, I'm, I was gonna touch on that. I wanna go there, especially with regard to cleaning your home and okay. the, the normal activities you do every day. So for instance, in my office, maybe my office is on the third floor and I have to carry documents from first floor to third floor like four or five times a day because my boss just tells me to. Um, some people would think of that as exercise, but a lot of people would think of that as adding to their stress. What do you say to this? <laughs> so it all depends. So everything has to be, it's a combination of all these uh, three um, different aspects that I spoke about. Mm. So just imagine someone who hasn't had up to maybe six hours of sleep. Mm on a particular day or seven. In fact, mm. the average Nigerian, I hear some people sleep three hours a day. I'm like, really? Mm. If you're giving that kind of person um, a huge set of files and telling the person to walk up and down the staircase, yeah. that's punishment. Okay. That's no more. Yes, they will be you know, burning calories and they will be moving and they will be active, which is good for them, but it's stress because they haven't slept. Okay. So that's another angle. That's, that's a major, in fact, for me, I always tell people, sleeping and rest, your mental health is even more important than trying to burn it or kill it, kill okay. the calories or burn the fat in the gym or whatever activity you want to do. Okay. We should be getting a minimum of seven to eight hours of sleep per wow. day. Wow. And majority of us are not getting that. And here's the thing, the more stressed out you are, the harder it is to lose weight. So a lot of mm. people ask me, but I don't see you in the gym. How come you were able to lose 40 kg? I've lost up to 40 kg and I've maintained this for six years. I don't see you in the gym. How did you do this? And I told them, look, I may not be in the gym, but I'm very active. Mm. I like to dance, even though some people say I can't dance. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Dancing is fun. <laughs> yes, dancing is fun. And I have two kids, so mm. I'm, I'm constantly up and down playing with them and stuff like that. And when it comes to doing like basic chores, I'm always happy to do that because for me, I know that I'm not in the gym, but guess what? These things actually help to de-stress us and I don't play with my sleep. I okay. don't joke with my sleep. In fact, on a day where I get less than seven hours of sleep, mm -hmm. my cravings are all over the place. You and start eating more. Yes, because there are two hormones that are responsible for appetite regulation. One is ghrelin and the other one is leptin. Okay. Now, when you get enough sleep, your body produces leptin. Okay. That means less hunger. Oh. But when you don't get enough sleep, you, have, you produce more ghrelin than leptin. Mm -hmm. And ghrelin is literally going to tell your body, I, your brain, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, even wow. when you're not hungry. So you find people constantly binging, constantly eating. So in other words, if you don't get enough sleep, yes. you're going to want to eat more. You're going to crave so more. So even if you're more. going to the gym, yeah. you're still going to end up eating the wrong things and not yeah. burn as much because you're not getting enough sleep. Yep. That's right. Goodness me. Another thing is that I mentioned two <laughs> hormones now. Oh, I have to stop you there. I'm afraid <laughs> I have to stop you. Okay. But um, I, I really would like you to come back. You know I what? Will, I will. Okay, let, I let's sure just will. take the final hormone. Let's okay. take the final hormone. Let's, let's talk okay, about Okay, so the quickly. final hormone is yeah. cortisol. Cortisol is a okay. stress hormone. Okay. And every time we are extremely stressed out, our body produces more cortisol. Mm. It slows down your metabolism, makes it harder for you to lose weight. Oh. It makes it harder for you to keep up with a healthy lifestyle. So all these things mm. are very, very important. Mm. Everything fused together is what we need to cultivate a healthy lifestyle. Mm. I have a lot more to say, but like you said, let you, me stop so yes. I don't just go on. So, but you will come back, please. I come. will definitely be back. Okay, so the hashtag <laughs> Ask Dams, uh, please just go online and ask any questions you have uh, of her and we'll see if we can answer some of them next time when she comes in. Yes. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC as well. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much All for right. having me. So uh, I know that Yomi is on standby and he has a guest with him. <laughs> ah, something very special is happening in the building this morning. I've got this really special guy. When you hear his voice, you know what I'm talking about. John Paul Ikechiku Oche, an award-winning lyric baritone opera singer. Now, anyway, I'm going to tell you what all that means. He's also a voice coach and a music consultant and a positive, proactive music director. He was crowned overall best uh, in West Africa for his grade eight music performance examination in singing conducted by the Association uh, Board of Royal Schools of Music, London, ladies and gentlemen. Now this guy uh, holds a bachelor's degree in music from the University of Education, Winnemar, Ghana. And he's joining us this morning for something really, really good. Uh, so he's gonna be taking a performance now a very short one, and then after that, we'll uh, talk to him later on and find out more 
about this special guy. John, are you ready for us? Yes. You're going to be doing something really, really good for us. Oh, and yes, uh, we'll have a discussion later on. This guy's been in music for like 19 years. Ah, all right. Are you ready? Yeah. When blossom flowered me the snows upon a winter night was born the child, the Christmas rose, the king of love and light. The angels sang, the shepherds sang, the grateful earth rejoiced. And at his blessed birth, the stars, their exultation voiced. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Venite, adore Adoremus Dominum Venite 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 Adoremus Hello and welcome back. It's the third hour on Wake Up Nigeria. Of course, we trust that we have quite a bit more to come for you. My name is Titi Laya Oinso. And I'm Yomi Okwe. I hope you saw that performance from John earlier yeah, on. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, just ushering us into that Christmas spirit. Uh, we like that. Very that good. That baritone but, uh, is yeah, epic. Yeah, super <laughs> baritone. And he's going to be joining us uh, for an interview uh, shortly as well. But anyway, you can watch us live right now at TVC and TV and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Those comments, yes, send them in. I know you have questions about our first few set of guests. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and let's see if we can help answer a few of them. Mm. Hashtag. Now, of course, you can find us on uh, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook as well. And you can also download our app from anywhere in the world and watch us live. Yes, indeed. Nice. Still to come, on a lighter note, there are some clips that we found that we think you should see. You need to stick around for that one. Yeah, and of course, our relationship uh, experts, Sandra uh, Dufadering will be joining us on the show. We'll talk about um, secrets in marriage, or marriage secrets, or... Uh... <laughs> what, marriage secrets, really? <laughs> <laughs> Marriage secrets. <laughs> you know, you know there are. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that. Uh, later on. Then we have two young actors, Marianne and Jessica. Now they're going to be joining us later on on the show for a chat. It yeah. was super hilarious. So I, I watched it, and then the side chick or the uh, <laughs> side chick really <laughs> says that the wives should be thankful wow. that they exist. Because your angry husband comes to the side chicks 
and comes back home to you happy. Ha! And that blew my mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't think that's the conversation we, we want to start right here. We won't finish it. <laughs> because... I, I don't get it. I, I don't know. Trying to I'm, say I'm, that the, that the trying to figure it out. husbands pour out all their anger on the side chicks. Is that what no, you're saying? I'm saying that the, hus the side chicks just have a good way of oh. making the husbands feel good ah. and come back home to you, the wife, yeah. happy. So okay. the wives should appreciate them because they take your husband's anger away. Wow. Okay, so oh, okay. the views expressed by that clip are not the views of Wake Up Nigeria. <laughs> but Entirely. it was just a clip. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a play. You watch and be the judge for yourself. Yeah. Anyway, people it's are funny. responding to uh, the, the mm -hmm. discussion we had during the coffee just earlier on mm -hmm. about oh, okay. hospitals. And of people course. are, you know, talking about uh, their own experiences and mm -hmm. what needs to be done. Yes. But we do have to go to the news now, and Ibrahim is on standby for us. Welcome to the news again. The Department of State Services has uncovered the plot to cause a breakdown of law and order in various parts of Nigeria. It says the plan to, is to instigate protests, mass action and violence with a view to causing anarchy and destabilizing the country. And according to the DSS, the planners want to cause chaos simultaneously in major cities and the federal capital in the coming weeks. It has now issued an alert and warns the alleged plotters to desist from their plan. Heads of academic and public institutions are now advised to warn their students and employees against engaging in acts that caused or that would cause public disorder. And after nearly 15 months in detention without charge, a former Navy officer and his wife can now breathe the fresh air outside an underground cell. Captain Dada Labinjo was arraigned on Monday after 21 others and he were handed uh, the, over to the EFS, uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. We we'll bring you a timeline of major events in this trial. Ordeal of the Labingers, who were both serving naval officers, reportedly started around 2001. They were charged and sentenced by a general court martial for disobeying orders, and then they headed to the Federal High Court in Lagos for a review and reinstatement, which they won. The Navy then headed to the Court of Appeal in 2004. But after several adjournments, the court dismissed the appeal for lack of diligent prosecution. And in 2012, the Supreme Court unanimously upheld that decision. In 2014, Captain Labinjo emerged president of the Nigeria Ship Owners Association, but the body has suffered a prolonged crisis over the years. In September 2018, the Navy arrested the Labinjos and 20 of their staff, as well as their vessel. Their almost 15-month-old underground detention without being charged with any offense enraged rights activists. In August this year, the Federal High Court in Lagos ordered his release. And later that month, his wife, Lieutenant Commandant Labinjo, and four others were arraigned. Finally, the captain and the others were arraigned on Monday. The plea did not guilty to two counts of dealing in petroleum products without license within the Nigerian maritime domain and the Gulf of Guinea. Justice Muslim Hassan granted the accused bill in the sum of 10 million naira, with one surety who must own landed property in Lagos and show evidence of three years tax payment. Trial continues in February 2020. Outside Nigeria, House Intelligence Committee voted along party lines Tuesday night to, improve, to approve a report that found evidence of President Donald Trump's misconduct and obstruction of Congress is overwhelming. The report released earlier Tuesday will form the backbone of the impeachment proceedings against the president and charges that Trump's conduct toward Ukraine compromised national security. The vote will send the report to the House Judiciary Committee as that, uh, that panel considers moving forward on articles of impeachment. The 300-page report from the House Intelligence Committee sets the stage for the impeachment of a U.S. president for the third time in history. And as the news updates at this time, bye now. Yeshua, when we call you, you will answer. Yeshua, when we call you, you deliver. There's no name, no name greater than yours. There's no name, no name greater.
better than yours. Oh, yes, you are. When we call you, you will answer. Yes, you are. When we call you, you deliver. There's no name, no name greater than yours. 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 Oh, there's no name. No name greater than yours. There's no name, no name greater than yours. You are when we call you, you will answer. Yes, you are. When we call you, you deliver. There's no name, no name greater than yours. Oh, there's no name, no name greater than yours. There's no name, no name greater than yours. Thank you very much. I'm sure our viewers can totally testify. That was really powerful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was asking you before you came on yeah. air, like, have you been singing from the womb? <laughs> because really? now the strength of your voice, are you sure you're not one of the people that when you were singing, your mother was feeling was it? feeling it. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so tell us about this song. Um, basically, Yeshua means Jesus. Yeah. So I think writing it is just, uh, so the Yeshua means um, Jesus in Hebrew. Okay. And um, it's just a reminder that Jesus still has the power to heal and do everything he did before. Yeah. Um, so when you call Yeshua, it's not like the regular Jesus you're used to. So immediately you're reminded that, oh yeah, Jesus used to do all these things back then. So then yeah. It's just a reminder of God's power and you know, okay. what he still does. So now as a gospel artist, yeah. what inspires your lyrics? What inspires your sound? Definitely the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, amen. <laughs> um, and then, obviously, God's Word, the Bible. Studying the Bible, you are open to all the amazing things about God and His love, and His, you know, it's just awesome. Oh, well, that was really powerful. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for sharing with us. Thank you. Oh, well, that's all. That's that's it. We can take for for Labi, and that was definitely a magical and powerful performance. Thank you. We will be joining Yomi as he has an interview to take with us. Welcome back. Now, you know that Wednesdays are for relationship and marriage and issues that affect uh, couples. And we are joined this morning by relationship coach Sandra Odufadimi. And she's going to be discussing uh, secrets in relationships and in marriage as well with us on the show. And uh, where do we start, Sandra? I, I want us to uh, go from, uh, do like a progression. So before two people get married. Uh, some people say, tell them everything. Mm -hmm. Other people say, oh, keep, keep, uh, keep a few of the secrets. So mm -hmm. uh, before you go into a marriage, what are the things that you should tell your would-be spouse and the things that you should keep away? And then when you get into the marriage as well. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. So if you have a child outside before you met the person, some people keep such secret and it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I found myself in such a situation when, before I got married, I was in a relationship with someone and he never told me he, was, he had a child of mm. 10 years old. On our way, one day we were just going on an outing and somebody called him the name of that child. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was like, and I probed you know, further mm. and I found that I had a child and that was the end of the relationship. Because as at that time, 
I wasn't ready to be a stepmom. Mm -hmm. And then I said to myself, he could, if he could hide stuff like thing, this yeah. for two years, then he, can, he could kill me after marriage. Mm. So that was why we, and so tell them everything. If they are going to accept you, they will accept you for who you are. If they are not going to accept you, they will leave you. What will be, will be. Mm. Don't hide anything in relationship. If you were a thief, before you changed, <laughs> let them know if you so were a prostitute. You, you, but they say all things are passed away. Yeah. You know, all things are becoming you. So if you're a new person and you're trying to reinvent yourself, should you still say, uh, should you still talk about your past? One thing about life is that your past will always haunt you. Mm. Yeah. So whatever you have done in the past, you might just meet a friend someday, somehow, that would just say, call you, you know, an old that friend. Name, yeah. So, but if the person you're married to is already aware of your nature, mm. the person would just, okay, fine, I'm aware. Some people believe in, I, it's common with men. Mm. I'm sorry I have to say this, it's very common. Um, even in marriages, when you now get into marriage, I talk about relationship on radio, mm. and I have a platform of over 2,000 family on WhatsApp that mm. we relate. And recently, a woman called me and said, um, Madam, I want to confide in you. And I said, okay, what is it? She said, um, my husband, Somebody, somebody called me from a bank mm. and said, good morning, are you Mrs. So, 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 so. Mm. Um, your husband is taking a loan from the bank and I use you, your, I can see your check with your signature on it mm. as his nest of king. Madam, do you understand the meaning of that? That means if, if he couldn't pay, if he can't pay the loan, you are you're going, uh, definitely going to be the next person mm. to pay. Yeah. She said she was shocked because she and her husband slept in the, in the same, same house, bed, yeah. the same bed that night before the money, and there was no conversation of such. Mm. And then she said to the person, I don't know, I'm his wife, but mm. I don't know. And she afterwards called her husband, and her husband yeah. was like, oh, don't worry, why are they calling you? I would, I would call the bank. Mm. Now, the thing is, why hide such important information mm. to your spouse? Mm. A lot of men go as far as, hiding password that we've spoken here several yeah. times, hiding their salaries, hiding a lot of things from your wife. Mm. And the person that really needs to know you, it's your wife. There are people who, t who talk about, uh, I know that you, with this uh, women empowerment generation, mm. where you know, people say, talk, about, um, talk to women about empowering themselves, so in case anything happens in the marriage, the woman can still be standing. Yeah. So you find that, uh, and I've heard this, this a lot, because you talked about men, but I've also heard this a lot now that you know women are buying lands in secret, oh, sure. um, hiding money away uh, in secret as well, so that if the husband suddenly decides that he wants to move on, uh, move on or have other kids outside, the woman can can protect herself. What what would you say in response to this kind of a, this kind of trend that seems to be happening a lot? There was a tweet that went viral recently of a lady that said she works in an organization where she's exposed to getting people's information mm. and that she found out that most women use their children as nest of king. Mm. And that's because we women, the only security we want to get from our husband is to be sure that this man is open. Mm. But the truth is that some men after marriage, they change completely. Before marriage, they will even be begging you. They want to have, have a joint account. They want you guys to buy properties together. together yeah. mm -hmm. Now, after marriage, they change. And if he's a woman that is sensible and knowledgeable and she's working, she's financially empowered, mm. instead of fighting or quarreling over issues, she just leave him behind and move on. If you're building your house and I can afford it, why not? No, but the problem the, starts yeah. from men. The angle I'm coming from is, uh, as a woman, building a house and then not telling your husband that no, you're building a house. absolutely very wrong hmm. very even if he refused to acknowledge the land but tell him hmm. i remember when i got my first property my husband hasn't even gotten his i told him when i was going to get it i said this is what i want to do and he said he wasn't interested in hmm. that environment that area but that was what i could afford us at that time hmm. so i told him I, I just i didn't want to spend the money and he's uh, up to date he hasn't been there because he's not interested but well, well, I know he's aware. He knows that he's seen the, see the document at home and all that. If I'm still going to get another tomorrow, I will still call him to read. Mm. So if you, as a woman, you want to get, it's very dangerous. It can lead to a break. break How about this situation where a lot of people, spouses on both sides, uh, husbands and wives, they say, I don't want to uh, divulge this information to my wife. Or I don't want to divulge this information to my husband because I don't want to hurt his ego. Mm. 
I don't want him to to um, misconstrue what my intention was. Maybe in the whatever situation, either in a personal relationship with someone or something that has to do with finances. How do you ensure that you manage information properly, even within a marriage? The Bible says the two shall be naked and they are not ashamed. Mm. So there is nothing hidden. There is nothing you want to manage with your husband or your wife. Because if you hide it, one day they will get to know. And that's where they mistrust. Once a woman, that's a woman for you. Mm. Once you prove to a woman that you don't, you are not to be trusted, she just take you like that. And she, you, before you can change that impression. So if you have been maintaining this trust in a relationship, when you now get to marriage, do everything to maintain it. Mm. Because it will help you a lot. Because the truth is, is a lot of men are dying before their time. Because their wives don't know anything about them. And so they keep, you see women having so much money in the bank. And if you check the husband's account, maybe he's having zero balance. Mm. He's spending everything, paying school fees, paying the rent. And the woman is just there looking at him and saying, look at this. Mm. He doesn't even know what he has. Right. Because she feels you are hiding a lot from her. And she wants protection. Mm. And one of the protection of a woman is her money. Mm. When I look at my bank account and I'm like, oh, yes, if this man walk away tomorrow, I, I'm going to move to Banana Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. He's just, he's just going to be seeing me everywhere. Right. You right. know? And like I always say on my show, the best revenge to a broken relationship is to be successful. Hmm. So every woman don't want to be caught unaware. She just wants to have that security. She just wants to have that. But if she has a, a husband, I'm a woman, hmm. that is giving her everything, she can bring her bank statement and say, see, this is it. Well, Sandra, to me, I, you know, it's always, uh, you know, it's always controversial when you're on the show. But uh, thank you for, so much for the, some of the information that thank you've given you. us today. Thank and you also for uh, giving us some revelations. Mm -hmm. Anyway, make sure that when you're in a relationship in a marriage, uh, keep it open. Ensure that, uh, that uh, <laughs> you, you don't hide anything, especially your accounts if you're in a marriage. <laughs> anyway, uh, Marianne Ivy. And uh, if, if, uh, her friend are going to be with uh, Topper right now on the couch. Hey, guys. Hi, Yomi. You know, I was patiently waiting to hear what you would have to say about that, but I could see you biting your words. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So with me in the studio, I have Marian Ivy. She is an actor, a content creator, a voiceover artist, and a drama educator. Now, she made her, de her theater debut in 2018. Also here with us is Jessica Gabriel Uja. Now she is also a theater and film trained graduate with several stage and screen credits to her name. Ooh, I have a lot of thespians, <laughs> thespian spirit here. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You know, so while we were talking before we came on air, yeah. I asked, are you in a relationship? Yeah. Because I want to know how your partner manages to accept your on screen life and not assume that the kisses aren't real and the okay. touching aren't real <laughs> tell me about that okay i'm presently not in a relationship Oops. but <laughs> but you know what i've actually mostly dated people in the industry like people filmmakers and you know theater artists too so they understand that is acting so now dating filmmakers and theater artists as well is it because you is that supposed to be a ladder towards making your career better or it just so happened that you fell in love with um, filmmakers? No, it, I just find that I actually find people that know things about or know stuff about film and theatre and all that attractive because that is what I'm interested in. Okay. So I don't really, it, it's actually not, it hasn't been a way to get high in my or career or something. Or exactly. So. But you know, I just find them more attractive because they know a lot about the things I'm interested in and there's always a lot to talk about. So, okay. Yeah. And Jessica? Yes. <laughs> Why do you think I'm, I'm not going to bite? I'm just asking questions. Mm. Okay, so now the film industry, TV, TV and um, stage. Yes. What would you say as a starting, as an uh, actress who just started her career, what would you say it is like? Is it re um, receptive or do you think you have to break some of your code of conduct to make your break in? Uh, no, I don't think you need to break any code of conduct. You just have to be yourself and just be good at what you do. Okay, that, so now as um, you, you just knew, you said you started your career last year. Yes. Now, have you found yourself in any compromising position with um, producers or directors that have told you you have to do this in order to get this role or it has just been a swift, easy flow for you? <laughs> 
Be what? honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I'm going to be honest. It's been, I haven't had such a situation yet because I've yeah. worked with mostly female directors. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm yet to encounter the male ones. <laughs> so I don't know how <laughs> what that about will you, be. Maria? I actually have last year because when I started, you, you know, one thing is when you don't know a lot of things or when you're really new, you just want to, you just want, okay, I have to do this, I have to go there. So I went for an audition last year and I remember the producer was like, oh, you have to take off your clothes. And I was like, like, no, like, oh, you, as an actor, you need to be really confident in your body because when you're acting the scene, you can be told to do anything. So I need you to take off your clothes. And I, this was during the audition? Yeah, I was the only, like, it was a closed audition though. So I was, it was just myself and, and the producer. And in my head, I was like, I'm actually confident in my body and I so want to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel right. You know, I felt weird about it. He didn't touch me or anything. When I took off my clothes, I was just like, okay, but you need to walk out. You know, you're not so fit. But did you get the role? I, I actually did not work with you because when I went home and I, and I thought about it and I called a, a friend of mine who is like older in the industry and she told me that no sane producer or no well-meaning producer would ask you to take off your clothes. That what scripts were you reading? Was did there any scripts? Like, was there any... No. Like, there wasn't even a script. He just wanted to see me, and, he said, and she said that that was wrong. I'm so let me get this right. There was no script. They just asked you to take <laughs> off your clothes, <laughs> and you took off your yeah, clothes. Yeah, because I was wow. like, okay, maybe he just wants to, you know. It's already all those producers that stay in Festac and all those old Nollywood people <laughs> okay. that, you know. They, I just felt like, okay, maybe these people have their own way of doing things because people. they like to have actors that they always work with. That was what I was thinking then. But it, it, I, just, I didn't just feel right about it. So. Okay. so now that happening to you, would you say that was a desperate move or for me? For you? Because you wanted to a, get the role? I wasn't, I wouldn't say it's a desperate move. I would say it was actually quite naive of me because okay. I wasn't desperate. I just wanted to prove that I'm very confident and I'm assertive as an actor, you know. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't even thinking, oh, I want to, I want to be in this film by all means. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show that as an actor, I, I can go the extra mile and just, you know, so I wasn't desperate. I was okay. just naive. But we hear you have um, a stage play coming up soon. Yeah. Also, you should definitely follow them on social media and see what's coming up with that stage play. On this note, we'll be going on a quick break and we will be right back. Welcome back to the kitchen. Now, I and Chef Yede have become best friends, and yes. she taught me a I didn't new have a way. I choice, yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> I thought it was, I really thought it was genuine, but it's, it's fine. Genu it's fine. It's fine. I was going to say that she taught me a new way to chop my peppers so that my fingers don't hurt. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we should totally show you, I guess, how you can chop your peppers without getting to get your fingers to get hurt with the after feel. So, yes. Yede, we should totally show them how yes, to do let's that. Let's do this. Yes. So I learned this from my grandma previously. She okay. knows, she taught me everything. Okay. So you have to put your, your fork into your pepper. Try and hold it down okay. to the min, uh, maximum of where you want to cut it. And then you go, hold it down like that. And then you go like that. So easy. Now this totally helps you to avoid using the salt and um, um, liquid wash to wash after, after you wash finish cutting after your pepper. You finish. And then, if you needed to get it finely chopped, you can just hold on to your fork like that and just go and just go again. Ooh. Yes, and then you can get it to your your choice, just like that. This is definitely a tip. I'm sure you all will be excited to learn. Very easy. Make sure you share with us videos of how you achieved yours at home using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria, so we know that Chef Yede. Helped you with some Hashtag cooking. Kuti's Bistro as well. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up Nigeria on TVC. Make sure you share with us and let's see how you achieved yours. So now we're going to just add this back. We're not adding it. Oh, we're not adding it. Oh, okay. We're oh, yes, almost because done. We're yeah. almost done already, but this was just to mm. show you how. To, ooh, I wish you can perceive what I'm smelling here. But you can see it. You can see it. It looks good. This is so colorful, guys, so colorful. The color is life. The color is life. And of course, the colors are the vegetables that we Bell always peppers. need. Now, we're going to have to join Yomi and Titi as they have a, a discussion coming up. And we will be right back to see what's going on with this juicy pen pasta here.
Uh, Chef Ye, they knows that uh, she's going to be doing a play for me as well. Yeah, play just uh, for you. Yeah, she knows that. She knows that. We're, we're going to have. Anyway, uh, earlier on, you heard his voice. Mm. Uh, really, really mm. nice. Uh, John Paul, and he's, he's absolutely amazing. And he's joining us. He's an award-winning um, uh, baritone mm. opera singer. And, you know, with, with lots of training. And he's been in the business for over 19 years. Professionally. So professionally, 19 years or? Uh, professionally, I'll say 10 years. 10 years, okay. okay. Um, I'm professionally 19 years because um, I sang in a church choir. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's so, amazing. So when did you find your voice? Uh, I'll say in 2004, okay. when I had um, debuted for his solo um, with the Laz Akwame Choral, that's um, His Royal Highness Professor Laz, the first professor in, uh, of music yeah. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we had a concert and, you know, um, then I sang tenor. I, w I used to sing tenor as a, as a singer. So um, I auditioned for a baritone role that's as a bass soloist. <laughs> And somehow it just sits so well with my voice, and mm. that was like, oh, you're baritone, you're not tenor. <laughs> wow. wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so that's amazing. Uh, so after that, of course, 2004, four. you then, uh, at what point were you, um, in, uh, in, did you move to the UK that you then had the opportunity to even perform professionally as well? Oh, okay. So I didn't move to the UK. I just, oh, okay. I, I went to, um, we have um, exams being conducted here okay. and mm. all over the world. Mm. Um, so I sat in for several exams here in Nigeria and in Ghana. And um, yeah, so, but basically I trained in Muson. Mm. Um, say working on my voice and all and um, trying to make it better as a singer. So yeah, um, Muson. Okay, mm. I, I have to ask. So which countries of the world has your voice taken you to now? Uh, it's a no, long list? Not really. It's, okay. it's, it's, quite, it's quite few, I must okay. confess. But um, I will say France, Ghana, um, mm. Nigeria here, mm. states, different states yeah. in Nigeria. And it's been wonderful um, where you get to meet people and the reaction and how well they appreciate the mm. art. Mm. You know, it's totally different from home. Mm. Um, especially in France, I went for um, a jazz, um, two weeks program and you know each time they would ask me I would always shy like oh no I, I'm not ready to sing I'm not singing and wow. they would call me out and like oh no you must sing you must perform mm. and each time the 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 warmth and the, the acceptance was mm. just you know incredible I was like wow mm. this must be something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know mm. so yeah it just gave me that inspiration and belief in my art and in my voice and mm. in total Yes, mm. that's amazing. You, you know, um, now because your 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 voice and your your type of music, which um, is more of, of opera singing, um, yeah. is not is not something that you would call mainstream. So you yeah. can't say uh, generally. You wouldn't say, okay, let's play this on the radio in the morning. So how do you? Uh, so for someone like you who does this professionally, um, you put in a lot of effort, a lot of training over the years. Yeah. Uh, you've built a brand for yourself. How do you make money? Mm. Because, so is it performances? Do you schedule like, okay, four performances a month or one performance a quarter? How, how does this work in, in, the business, in the business of opera singing? Okay, four performances a month is, you know, yeah, we get that, you mm. know. Um, we get to sing birthdays, funerals and all, mm. weddings and all sorts. Um, but uh, looking at the society today, um, I believe as an artist, you need to live in your time. Um, classical singing and opera singing started, you know, was like the background for us, you know. So yes, it's still ongoing and it's still very strong though. Um, but um, I'm of the opinion that you also need to just tap into your time. Mm. And what's in vogue now is contemporary music where you get to do pop and all sorts. Mm. So um, I'm beginning to diversify, so I do a bit of gospel i do a bit of jazz i do a bit of contemporary and you know recently i sang a gospel concert you know where <laughs> i was doing the whole hallelujah you know all that singing and my one of my teachers my tutors was it was happened to be in the concert and he was just staring he was like <laughs> he couldn't believe it. like how are you able to switch up your voice and you know and yeah. And so far, with people like Ige and um, Uncle Ben of Project Fame, mm. you know, we've been able to learn. I've been able to learn so much, and, and you know, be, be being able dynamic. to switch it up and mm. 
be more versatile and um, yeah. So versatility for me has been awesome and so it opens the door wider. So mm -hmm. they say, oh, we want an artist to do a bit of Nat King Cole and want you to also do a bit of Andre Bocelli. You say, okay. Don't worry, just we'll give me a call. A yeah. <laughs> nice. We'll nice, find nice, it. We'll nice. find a way. And right. you know, then also teaching too has mm. been, you know, because um, in this part of the world we really barely have um, good professional teachers. So yes, we, we have All to. Right. Mm. Put in the okay. Hand. So uh, Excellent. Excellent. we you you saw part of the meal being prepared yeah. by our chef, uh, and uh, she does a lot of preparation for meals the same way you prepare for a concert. Oh. So it's time for us to go for her. Oh, Con wow. Concerto of, of, I'm trying to find a way to link it, it's not working, <laughs> but hey, you know what I'm talking about. Let's go and see Chef Yeide in the kitchen okay. and see if we can give this baritone a meal. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I am Chef Yeide. Please have a seat over here. Come on with some oh. really juicy. After you. Welcome. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> oh, look no. at that. No, I'm just I, I was no. trying to position it. Thank you. Yeah. Position for I and Chef <laughs> Yedi. Yes, so, Chef Yedi, please Good tell morning. us what we have here. Good morning. Um, we have a penny, meaty penny pasta. Mm. So I meant, it's penny. like a spaghetti bolognese, but I use a penny pasta instead of a normal pasta. Mm. All right. The meatballs, penny. some bell peppers. Wow, looks good. So oh, good. yum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can hear the music playing in the yes. background. That's, that's, <laughs> yes, that's the, the mm. part of the uh, experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the many colors in it, uh, I think I'm just going to call this Italian salad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I like the picture on the screen there. Yeah. Oh, wow. It looks nice. Eh? Very really nice. nice. Please have a taste and tell us what you think. Uh, where do I start? From expressions <laughs> to ratings. <laughs> yes, sir. Now I have a bit of a red. Uh -uh. Hey, goodness me. Stay, come on, stay. <laughs> stay. stay. And a bit of green. Mm, here we okay. go. Then my friends seem to tell, they tell me I have a fetish for meat. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so throw that in there as well. Uh, so, yeah. Meatball. Ah, yeah. right. nice, so now nice, have nice, a taste. Nice. Um, <laughs> Jeffy, you do. Mm, you, should, mm. you should use him for Thumbs your adverts. <laughs> Yeah, mm. you look like okay. you're about to sell this. <laughs> this is a commercial. I'm mm. telling you. It's a very nice commercial. <laughs> and while, while John is busy savoring uh, that the food flavor. and, and mm -hmm. you know, getting that flavor in, we want to say a big thank you to Homie NG for the kitchen accessories. Yes, all we got indeed. Nigeria. And of course, a big shout out to everyone who came on the show today. The show was packed today, I have to say. Yeah, loaded, loaded. Yeah, and thanks for everyone who reached out on social media. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC to reach out to us. Can't wait to hear from you. Yeah, thank you, John, for uh, stopping you. by. Yeah. Oh, and uh, hopefully you do us some Christmas. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have you during the Christmas period as well. Hopefully, yes, if you're yeah. not too busy, oh, okay. uh, right. please come back. Please come back. Thank Chef you, Chef Yeye. Right. Thank you. Did oh, you go and notice? He, he, said, he said something about a concert just now. Oh, yes. Um, um, I'm having a concert on Sunday. Oh, okay. Sunday, okay. This coming Sunday, yes. Uh, so y'all need to go for the concert, y'all. It's at Muson Center. Muson oh, okay. Center. Uh, find him. Find him on social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. Wow. We okay. have to go.